What's up, Difference Maker? In this week's podcast episode, we decided to go in on the eight do's and don'ts of performance anxiety. One of the biggest issues that athletes come to us with are having to deal with anxiousness before performances. So in this episode, Chris and I break it down. We give you all the little things that you need to do to make sure the top eight do's and don'ts to decrease that anxiety before performances. And of course, if you could help us really, really blow up this channel, we would appreciate it. All we're asking, leave a review, share, subscribe, download, follow wherever you're tuning in from. It helps us grow this channel further and it helps us rank higher so we can keep bringing you free content. With that being said, let's dive into the eight do's and don'ts of performance anxiety. So one of the biggest issues that a lot of athletes come to us with or high performers come to us with is performance anxiety, right? And performance anxiety is one of those things that, you know, I feel like a lot of people can prevent, to be honest with you, and that they feel that they can take control of but they don't. So in this episode, we're really going to dive in on that and just really understand it a little bit more because this is, it's a topic that we want to help with. So the eight do's and don'ts of performance anxiety, we're going to hit it today. Anything on the topic before we get into it, Chris? Uh, nope. Just something that's very common. I think with a lot of people, not even just performance anxiety, yes. like games itself, but it could be anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and if it's something that you feel affects you, uh, I think this is a great episode and an opportunity to, to just learn and try some of these techniques that we have for you. Yeah. So eight do's and don'ts, performance anxiety. To start, though, I want to start by just helping a lot of viewers understand or yourself. Defeating performance anxiety is a combination of two things. One, doing the work so that you feel confident and certain. Two, properly focusing. That's pretty much it. Right. So we're going to dive into the different realms today of those two categories, if you will, where we're going to give you a lot of different things that you can do to build your certainty. So that way you get rid of that anxiousness. And on the other side, we're going to give you a lot of things to do so that you can properly build your focus. So that way you're not going into things just running all over the place. Because it's often when, you know, if you think of an anxious person, oftentimes if you characterize them in your head, you would describe them as somebody who you probably see who's showing up just on time with certain things or they're overthinking things or they're constantly questioning themselves. They look panicked. We got to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. So starting with that, number one, the first do, start your week with the end goal in mind, then break it down into actions you want to work on. Don't go into the week without a plan. Do you yeah. want to start with that or you want me to expand? Uh, no, like that's actually something that even working on... Um even if you're not feeling that anxiety, but working on just understanding what you need to do for the week, it's, it's a, it's a calming feeling. You have a, you have, you set out with the right perception with what you have to do for the week and you kind of go do it and it's easier to take action on it. Yeah. So, I mean, when you have that clarity, it's, it's easy. Yeah. And that's the key with it is clarity to break down the science to go into this. So start with the end goal in mind. So what you want to do is you want to look at your week and you say, what do I want to create this week? What do I really want to accomplish? And it could be, for example, for me this past week, I had the coaches certification I had to create, some marketing content we had to create, and then of course, just different business systems. For an athlete, it could be as simple as, you know, they had to create uh, more offense in their performance for the week. For another athlete, it might be create, you know, better consistency in their performances, whatever. So right there, what that does is start you on a path where you're able to focus in on one thing. Yeah, and I, uh, big disclaimer, you got to be realistic with it. What you can actually accomplish in a week yeah. um, and even day to day. Like if you stack too much in a day, you're going to screw yourself over. Yeah, pick one outcome. And then what you want to do is break that outcome down into actions. So for athletes, if you're an athlete tuning in, it's going to be very simple for you because what you're going to say is, for example, I want to create more offense. And then it's like, okay, so what one to two things go into me creating more offense, right? Could be shooting better and it could be utilizing my speed better. Okay, so you're going to work on that all week versus what a lot of athletes do and they get anxious over it. They have no plan. They go in with no work. There's no confidence they're building. There's no focus they're building. And that really hurts it. Well, it's kind of like a video I actually I saw. Um, <laughs> it was a uh, soccer training, and I can I can uh, relate to this a lot because mm -hmm. you would take a bunch a bag of balls to the field. You'd be like, "Yeah, I'm going to train today," but you have no real plan. You end uh, up shooting for 40 minutes, and then you go home. Yep. And it's like you know, unless you actually wanted to work on shooting, yeah, you're just kind of going there to mess around. So. Yeah. It's uh, it's a lot easier when, when again, you do have that plan. Yeah, and look, when we're working with the best athletes in the world to write down to youth athletes, every athlete every single week has a plan. 
And that's because the only way to decrease that anxiousness is to one. So let's look at what this does for a sec. When you break a result down into an action, that right there allows you to start building confidence and certainty because you're working on a skill versus depending on an uncontrollable result. Mm -hmm. And number two, it takes control of your focus because you have an end result in mind that's now broken into action steps. Yeah. So it helps with those two things like we spoke about. Yeah. Well, when you know what it's going to help you with, um, it's easy to take action on it. Yeah. It's very easy. It's kind of like, you know, when people are comparing, why am I learning this in school right now? What's it going to do in the long term for me? Yeah. You know? And that's even with one of the athletes we have, like I was saying, pro athletes, the reason we go on such a week by week basis with athletes is because your performances and your conditions are changing so frequently. Mm hmm. Right. You could pick up a little injury that week and then you have to work a little bit more on, you know, creating offense might actually be bettering that calf that you strained. That's a real thing we've got going on with an athlete right now. Right. Or, you know, maybe that week you noticed your three point shooting was off. So specifically, you need to tweak that. But you need a plan going into the week that's going to help decrease your perform uh, your anxiety. OK. Number two, do make a commitment to working on those skills for at least 15 minutes a day outside of practice where you can create a mental environment don't just depend on team practices. Do you want to hit that one? Uh, well, like for what's Matt saying there, like if you're already at the field after a team practice, you can hit it then as well. Yeah. Right. It's not like, you know, you have to uh, like utilize the time that's, that is right there for you. It's not like you have to go home from team practice then you got to set up again and do yeah. all that stuff. Like use what's available for you. And, can even and show go for it. Sorry, 15 minutes before. Can do that as well. Right. Yeah. But the reason we're saying this for anybody tuning in is because, you know, a lot of times I've noticed people come to us suffering with anxiousness, but they don't face the things they're anxious about. Right. So it's like if you're anxious because you don't trust in a skill that you have and if you can perform. So let's break down a real scenario. If you're anxious because a coach put pressure on you that you have to score in a game. Okay. Confident and certain athletes don't get anxious over that because they trust at the root, the skill that's at the root of it. They trust the skill, right? So if you're going into performance where you're feeling anxious because a coach said you need to perform, if you're certain about your skills, you're not going to have that anxiousness. So taking the time for 15 minutes a day to go outside of your team before or after a practice or on your own, if you don't have a team practice to work on those skills with the right urgency and intensity will drastically increase your confidence. And if you visualize, which we'll get into point number three, hint, hint, you'll also build the certainty behind it. A lot of times we find that athletes just go into team practices hoping that the problem is going to get solved and it never does. Yeah. The Difference Maker podcast is something that Chris and I put a lot of work into and it's something we love to do for you. So all we're asking in return, please, if you can, leave a review, leave a rating, leave a comment on our podcast. It helps us get ranked higher and it helps us continue to bring you free content. We're not asking for anything else. We don't do any kind of paid promotion for this. We don't do anything you know, surrounding it. We're literally bringing you the top free pieces of content that we use with our best athletes to make sure that we can get you the resilient skills they have. So please, if you can, leave a review leave a rating, make sure to subscribe to us, click the notification bell if you're tuning in on YouTube, leave a comment down below, just help us grow this channel so we can help bring you or keep bringing you free content. Absolutely, and that's why in all our coaching programs when we do work with our athletes one-on-one -on -one, to the first point, we break everything down into what you need to focus on for the week and then we help you develop the action plan to work on it and that's why a lot of the people we work with decrease their anxiety. That's like the most basic side. So if you are interested in working in a one-on-one -on -one program, there's links down below, but let's move on to the third part. Number three, do practice visualization around those three skills or those skills, sorry, five times per week. Don't wing it when it comes to your prep. I want to hit this one first because this is important. So many times we see athletes who think they're visualizing, but they're not. And it's not your fault. It's what you've been taught and what you've been YouTubing and what you've been Googling, and it's why we've done so many different videos on our YouTube channel. Check it out if you haven't on things like visualization. But the whole thing is visualizing is key for skill enhancement and certainty behind your skills. Visualization allows you to practice those skills perfectly in your head so you have the certainty to execute them in public. Visualization is the only place that you can truly create proper neuro associations of perfection. I'm not saying in general, in perfection, so that you can walk into performances with that feeling of, quote, not thinking because you're so certain of yourself. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, completely. Right. Yeah. And it's like a lot of times we see it where athletes will wing it with their prep, where it's like, I'm just going to go in this week and work on something and maybe I'll try visualizing the outcome. But the truth is visualizing outcomes are a whole different kind of visualization. That's more so manifestation. That doesn't build certainty behind your skills. What builds certainty behind your skills is visualizing, utilizing that skill in performance and it gets you the result. You need to see how, how to use that skill. You don't need to see just the result. And, and this is how important having certainty behind your skills is. So think of it like this. Confidence is normally built from the, the, repetition. the repetition, the actions that you put into whatever that result is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're thinking that you need to go into a game confident personally, I don't think, I think it needs to change to, I need to go into a game feeling number one prepared, mm -hmm. but number two, certain in my abilities. Because if you can hit those abilities over and over and over and over again throughout yeah. that game and then get results as you're going through that game, you're going to build that confidence by the end of it. I think there's too much pressure on going into things feeling confident instead of allowing yourself to first have those actions first to build that confidence. Yep. Like personally, I don't know. I think if you're putting so much pressure on yourself to go into a game confident, you're already defeating yourself because you're not even giving yourself an opportunity to make a mistake in the first place. Well, and on top of that too, I think a lot of people don't realize confidence is the one thing that fluctuates because you're going into new environments, right? You need, here's how it really works when you break it down. It goes certainty, courage, confidence, meaning that you need to be certain of your skills first. When you're certain of your skills, that means you trust the skill you have which goes to the next point, it, it allows you to be courageous to take action. And when you take action and you get the result, that builds confidence. Well, a perfect example of this, I, I was listening to the radio this morning and um, they were talking about a player in the NHL. Mm -hmm. And it's not like, he's not a first time, or sorry, he's not a first team player just yet. He's still bouncing in between AHL, NHL, trying to yeah. make that spot. And he was injured all of last year. And um, it was a very, you know, probably under the radar comment uh, that someone made, but it was let him play an entire season and allow him to build that confidence, an entire season to then have that confidence, yeah. meaning shift after shift, game after game, doing the right things to then have that confidence, but an entire season, not three weeks no like an entire season and which makes sense and sorry but when coaches get into this crap of confidence should have been built in the next game like i see that i look i we see that a lot with our nfl clients nfl is tough with that right because you might not even get targeted sometimes you have one rep you got to do it over and over again what you have to understand is confidence comes from over time getting the results in performance before that confidence, though, comes courage to take action. And before that courage comes to take action, you need to be sure of skills. For example, you might be an athlete who's never, ever, ever scored a goal in your life, but you're absolutely sure of your finishing ability and your ability to get in the right scoring areas. And you're sure of it. Let's pretend it's your first game ever. That's going to give you the confidence or sorry, the courage to go take action on that in performance. So now you have the certainty in how to score. You have the courage to go try it in a game. And when you go try it in a game and you get the result, confidence builds. That's how this works. So do practice visualization. Do it five times a week around those skills that you broke down for the week. And do not wing it when it comes to your prep. Number four, do take the time to focus on the actions that drive results in performance. Don't just focus on the results. We kind of already hit on this. Mm -hmm. Do you want to touch it? No. I mean, hit the actions. Do the actions well, you get the result. Yeah. It's a very simple process. Like so many times athletes come to us anxious because all they focus on is results. Here's a little life hack, mind blow, whatever you want to call it. If you're anxious, I'm almost going to bet 99.9% .9 of the time it's because you're focused on something you cannot control. That can be results. That can be somebody's opinion. That could be anything, but I can almost guarantee you every single time it's on what you cannot control. Usually for athletes, it comes back to those top two things, worrying about other people's opinions, which is normal. You're in a high performance environment or worrying about the results, which again is normal. You're in a high performing environment, right? So when it comes to it, we have to understand the way to get back into that focus is to break it down, focus on the actions. And your one job is very simple as a high performing athlete. Do the next rep better than the last one. Mm -hmm. That's it. 
So if your focus is the two things you found that go into creating more offense is using your speed and shooting to score every single shift, all you should be focused on is bettering on the next shift. Did I use my speed as well as I can? Did I shoot to score as well as I can? If not, change it, tweak it, do it again. That's how this works. Yeah. And you will get the results from it. Yeah. Like, and you are in control of that. Yeah. You really will get the results from it. Like I, I've said this to, to many people, but any idiot can score one time. Yep. You know, uh, if you're, and that's great for house league, that's fantastic. But if I'm a professional scout looking to have an investment on my team, I want someone that's going to be there for the long haul for 86 games or however long your season is doing the right things over and over and over again, then again, any idiot can score. Yeah. And, and to Chris's point, this is not saying either, like I hear so many times like, Oh, focus on your cues. This is not, this is not that what we're saying is focus on the actions that drive the result you want. Yeah. Because at the, as well, we're not saying that results don't matter. No, they, they, they 100% do hundred percent do, but you need to be so effective in getting them. And the way to do that is to focus on the actions and just continuing to innovate your game Yep. at the end of the day. You need to, you got to become a master craftsman or woman or craftsperson, right? So focus on the one rep at a time that drive res- uh, the actions that drive results. Don't just focus on the result. Number five, do understand the environment you're going into. Don't assume it'll be okay. I think this is a really big one. I see so many times in, in a, the programs we work with our athletes on, so many times athletes come to us and talk to us about, oh my God, I thought it was going to be a lot simpler here or a lot simpler there, and it wasn't. A lot of athletes don't like to face the reality of their process. Mm-hmm. That's a really big cause of anxiety. I'm not saying you need to go in there and forecast every little thing that's going to happen or see if you can predict what's going to happen. That's going to cause you to be even more anxious. What I am saying though is having an understanding that this will be tough. I will need to make sure I have resilience. I do need to make sure I'm constantly working on myself and focus on myself because that's how results happen. You need to understand the environment you're going into. If you're going into a team that's last place in the league, you need to understand that. If you're like some of our pro athletes right now who have been in preseasons and they understand that they are going into a situation where they're going to need to battle out to other individuals for a spot, you need to be very well aware of that. Mm -hmm. Because when you're not, it causes uncertainty and that uncertainty is what causes anxiety. Yeah, as soon as I think as soon as you underestimate that environment, you're it's over. Yeah. It, it for that day anyways until it, you snap out of it. But as soon as you as soon as you underestimate it or someone says, you know, we have we have a couple guys injured, you have a great opportunity to make the team. As soon as you underestimate it and you start to take your foot off the gas or whatever the case may be, it's, it's going to kick your ass. It's over. And that's why too, like when we're working with individuals in a program that we are, one of the most important things you can do for this is constantly reestablish your motivation. That's something we work through. If you're interested, links down below. But the point is on that, you need to make sure you have the right kind of driving forces behind your actions so you can understand the environment. There's a bigger reason and purpose as to why you're there and you don't get thrown off by those one or two things. Mm -hmm. Know the environment you're going into, know the animal you're dealing with, commit to the reality of your process, however you want to frame it, but know what you're getting yourself into so you can defeat it and win. Simple, okay? Number six, do take on a form of breathing before performances so you can calm down. Don't just go into performances hoping it'll go away. I have so many times seen athletes or spoken with athletes, and you have too, Chris, where they come in and it's like, oh my God, this past performance, I felt like I was going to puke right before it. How did you deal with it? We'll ask them, how did you deal with it? Uh, I didn't really. I just, I thought it would go away. It's like, well, when did it go away? Went away by, you know, X minute in the game. And here's the unfortunate part. If it's greater than two minutes, you have the opportunity to be judged, (laughs) right? That's a truth at the highest performing levels. That's a truth. If it's greater than two minutes, you have the opportunity to be judged. So what you have to understand is do not hope for your performances in your first couple reps to solve your anxiety. It will not. In fact, it will make it worse sometimes. What you need to do is take on a form of breathing before performances so you can calm down. Uh, One of the best kinds of breathing that I think for this, and it's science-driven too and research-backed, is box breathing. You can find that anywhere on YouTube. Simply apply this before performances. You'll find so many different instructionals. They're all there. We even have a video on YouTube about dealing with performance anxiety. You can check that out as well. But the point is, take on a form of breathing. Don't look for your performances just to solve your anxiousness. It's one of the worst things you can do. Anything to add on that? No. 
Okay. It's very, it's very clear cut. I mean, you can take control of the breathing. You can take control of this anxiety. Um, a lot of people d- look, I'm can. not, I'm not trying to bash on people that experience frequent anxiety, but a lot of times if you, re- when we really start to dig in with the people who come to work with us and we understand where they're at, a lot of people think they're doing something to deal with their, their anxiousness when really they're not. Well, like there was something, um, I, there was a psychologist, he, it was a quick video that I saw online, but I think it was anxiety and something else. But the reason why it's talked about so often is because it's so common. It's kind of like the common cold when, when you have a, when you yeah. have a sickness, right? But it's so common because it's a natural like it's it's just something that's there. Anxiety is human nature. But it's something that's there. Yeah. And as soon as you make it out to be more than what it is, which is the common cold, I think you have a very 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 tough time of just working through it. Yep. Because everybody has it. Sometimes when you when you open up an email, I'm sure uh, a lot of people my age when you open up an email, it's like before you open it up, it's like, "Oh my god, here we go." Yeah. Could be this, could be that, could be whatever. Before for our parents, it was getting mail. And it was bills in the mail. Like, it's it's, it's so common that it does not to, need to be any bigger than what it is because there's ways to deal with it. And I think you need to see as well anxiety for what it really is, which is it's, a, it's your brain's safety mechanism. It's trying to protect you. It's on hyper alert of what's happening in the future so you can prepare yourself. The way to deal with anxiety is to run to the root of what's causing it. So if what's causing it is your... And I will say, I will say this for anybody tuning in. A lot of times anxiety, the ones that I find plague are like the athletes I find who are plagued with anxiety often are feeling guilt more than they're feeling anxiousness. The guilt of knowing they haven't fully prepared themselves, the guilt of knowing that they haven't fully done what they need to do to be at their best. And then they get anxious over something or the guilt that they know that they did something foolish and they said something dumb or did something dumb and it caused them to get into some kind of mode. But a lot of times when I see people who are dealing with anxiousness or they come to us, they don't try to take control of it as much as they think. They leave it, right? Run to the root of it and you'll be able to take care of it. I was talking to one of our highest performing athletes. I won't mention any names because this is sensitive, but one of our higher performing pro athletes who is well known as well in different worlds and like business worlds and so on. And he goes, man, I feel the anxiety sometimes of having to walk into a room with really big people. It's like, yeah. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. It's like, that's, that's, that's a real cause. It's like, so what do we got to do to work through that? It's like, well, I need to work on my ability to start conversations. It's like, okay, great. So he started to work on that. It's like, I need to make sure that I have the understanding on how to build actual comfortability or you know we broke it down to say rapport with people so that means style and substance so once we work through those he was okay actually one thing that i heard i don't want to take credit for it but it was something that um that i heard i forget from who but one way to to help work with that is so normally like if you're in a room like let's just say you know social anxiety is your thing Mm -hmm. uh Mm -hmm. it's something that you know gets to you um one good way of doing this or working through it is as soon as you start to think about how you are perceived by other people that's when you start to get anxious yeah okay so one of the easiest ways to work against that is catch yourself in the moment when you start thinking about oh how do i look this that my personal appearance all that stuff switch it and say how do i make the people around me more comfortable and if that's a good one, it will engage you in that conversation. You stop thinking about yourself and you start thinking about how do I make someone else feel more comfortable in this situation? And it's just normally it's conversation. Hey, how's it going? Who's who's the first one to break the ice? Normally, when b- people are silent, it's it's who's going to make that first move. Yeah, it's that anticipation, right? I agree with that. If you're the one that is making those people feel comfortable or breaking the ice. Number one, you come off as natural. Number two, you stop thinking about yourself and how everyone else is possibly thinking about you. And you're more so just you're in, engaged in the moment. Yeah. If that makes sense. You're not in your own head. Yeah. You're just being fully present. If I can figure out uh, where that was from, I'll, we'll I'll put it, it down. But it good. Um, it's a really good one. Yeah, it's it, And it's logical and it makes sense. Yep. 
No, it is. And that's sometimes like a lot of this anxiousness can be solved by to Chris's point, logic, making sense of it, being critical over your thinking, having an action plan. It's really all it is. Well, it's even in Clarity. games. It's it's in games for anyone that like it was in uh Andrea Pirlo's book. Mm-hmm. Where it was um, who's a soccer player for anybody who doesn't yeah. know. And uh he was saying how he hated uh warm-ups before the game. And it's just like let's get into it. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like the same thing with the conversation. When mm-hmm. you're engaged already instead of anticipating what's gonna happen, like you just you kind of act. Yeah. You know? It's true. It's going for well, what do you even say in the book? Four hours before I won the World Cup, I was playing PlayStation. Yeah. It helps for anyone that now, oh, has so, tr- problems car- compartmentalizing their days. Like if they have a really stacked schedule, that helps as well. I was just going to say, though, that's not, an, uh, we are not suggesting go do that. This is a very veteran pro. Oh, well, yeah. Who was already at the peak of his prime and he could do certain things that helped him. So when you get there, if you do, you'll be able to play PlayStation before the World Cup, too. <laughs> okay. Um, number seven, do you take the time to highlight? This is a very important one. Please, anybody tuning in, asterisk this. Do take the time to highlight who you need to talk to and who you need to stay away from before performances. And don't just let anybody in before your performances. And don't feel bad about it. Yes. I'm telling you, one of the things that I see as, as, one, of the poten- as one of the biggest causes of a lot of our athletes' anxieties are those they decide to speak with before performances. That's why in our one-on-one programs, one thing we offer are pregame calls. It's the truth. Right, because part of our coaching is taking control of your focus before a game and decreasing performances or anxiety. Sorry, but I think you got to start to realize, and you can do this by a simple list. Who do you start to get that feeling of having to prove yourself from, having to show up to, having to say something to, whatever? Who makes you feel that way? That's often a great part to start at or place to start at, and then work backwards from all the other things. There's some people you shouldn't be speaking with before performances, and you know who they are. Yeah. And to Chris's point, don't feel bad, right? Like we say this all the time with our athletes, get selfish to be selfless. Because in the, in the long run, this is what's going to happen. You're going to play very well. Mm-hmm. You're then going to have great conversations with whoever afterwards. And that's all you have to worry about. Yep. Get selfish to be selfless. Are they going to get you know sad because you're not talking to them before a game? Yeah. But are they, are, is your anxiety going to decrease heavily? So and, are the they, fixes. Yeah. and are they going to be more happy that you're doing well? Of course. Hell yeah. Of course. And the last one, number eight. Do understand that your work and effort is the variable you should be measuring. Don't just look at the results itself. I can't tell you. Like, There's one NHL player we started working with this past summer. He's been crushing it, doing great right now. And the biggest thing he changed, so his agent came to us and he goes, oh, this so-and-so has a lot of anxiety and that's what we got to get rid of and da-da-da-da. It's like, okay, just took him through. Looked at his work, looked at his prep, saw if he was actually focusing. I actually said this this morning in one of our um, pieces of content we were creating. It's not a matter, though, of building skills. It's a matter of building the right skills. Mm -hmm. So we looked at everything, and it's like, dude, why are you feeling anxious when you go into performances? And he's like, man, I just don't feel prepared. And then we looked at his preparation, and it was exactly to that point. You're working on the wrong things. And you're measuring the wrong things. You're working on the wrong thing and then going to measure it and me- measuring the result in performance. And really the truth of the matter is you need to be focusing on the work and seeing your effort as the variable that you should be measuring. You can literally gauge how well a performance is going to be based on the work that you do. It's that simple and how specific. Get clear, get real, get focused. So to wrap this all up, keeping it very simple, make sure you go through this eight do's and don'ts list of performance anxiety. If you're interested in working with us, there's a link down below. You can apply to see if our one-on-one coaching programs are the right fit for you, and we'll see if we can help you. We've also got our Mala Team Pocket Coach linked down below where you have a do-it-yourself program and an app. A lot of our athletes have been getting great results of that as of late. And if you want to subscribe to our free newsletter, click the link down below. The Mala Team Insider, we hit you with weekly resilience skills that you can build. Make sure to please like, subscribe, click the notification bell if you're tuning in on YouTube, and please share this. Leave us a review if you don't mind. One of the biggest things that helps us grow this channel is the algorithm, and it's something we want to give to you for free. So with that being said, stay resilient, and we'll see you in the next one.